So here we have a very interesting blog post by someone who works at OpenAI as a research engineer since 2022. This is called General Intelligence by James Betker, and it is a fascinating read on the next few years for the timeline of AGI and artificial intelligence. Now, I think this is really important because after you view this video and after you view some of the things that are stated in this video, you're going to realize that there are two main takeaways from this. Number one, things are probably going to change more rapidly than you think. And number two, that there is a certain year slash date that consistently gets mentioned when people are talking about AGI. So without further ado, let's dive into this blog post because it's truly intriguing on some of the things that it talks about. So he speaks about how folks in the field like to make predictions for AGI and I have thoughts and I've always wanted to write them down. So let's do that. He said, since this isn't something I've touched on in the past, I'll start by doing my best to define by what I mean by general intelligence. A generally intelligent entity is one that achieves a special synthesis of three things. So you've got three things here. Number one being a way of interacting with and observing a complex environment. Typically, this means embodiment, the ability to perceive and interact with the natural world. This is, of course, something that current AI systems are not really there yet with. But of course, basically, this is what humans have a true, true understanding of. We can perceive and interact with the natural world with all of our sensory inputs like touch and smell and sight and all of these crazy different things that we have. A robust world model covering the environment. This is the mechanism which allows the entity to perform a quick inference with reasonable accuracy. World models in humans are generally referred to as intuition, fast thinking, or even system one thinking. And system one thinking is basically where you just intuitively know exactly what to do. For example, recognizing someone's face, recognizing a familiar face in a crowd without, you know, conscious effort, you know, like when you're driving on an empty road, stuff like that. And for example, if you heard a loud bang, you'd immediately look towards that bang and you'd immediately think, oh my God, what on earth was that? You know, these are just like your initial intuitive reactions. And these things are, you know, genuinely there in humans and even some animals. Now, he also talks about a mechanism for performing deep introspection on arbitrary topics. This is the thought of in many different ways. It is reasoning or slow thinking or system two thinking. So system two thinking, this is where, you know, you have a hard math problem or, for example, there's a deviation in your environment you have to kind of think about how you can solve that problem. So for example, you know, let's say you are going to work and today the bridge is closed that you usually cross. You have to think about, you know, a new way to get to work. What road to take? Is it safe? Is it fast? Can you get there on time? Those are the kinds of things where you engage in your system to thinking where it's not just like an intuitive reaction. You have to actually think, okay, what is going on here? We need to think about this, you know, and it's, it's kind of like a slow level of thinking because it just requires a lot more thought. And then basically he says that with all of these three things, so we've got key, like three important things here. If you have these three things, you can build a generally intelligent agent. Now, it's important to note here that what he doesn't say is that this is AGI, but what he does say is that this is a generally, okay, generally intelligent agent okay and it's important to make that distinction because and this is a little different from agi and he actually talks about this later on in the video i'll explain but it's basically different because agi is kind of like a scale so we're not just going to have you know ai and then boom we get agi it's more going to be like okay we can have something that's generally intelligent and it's an agent that can do a decent amount of things and then we get to like another iteration that's going to be you know a step up from that so it's not just going to be leaps and bounds every single time as much people think it's going to be like you know one giant staircase like boom and then boom it's more going to be like you know a gradual increase of the capabilities of whatever system they're building. So this is where he talks about how using these three key components, the, you know, the perceiving and interacting with the natural world, um, a world model covering the environment, you know, where you're able to truly understand what goes on immediately. And of course, a mechanism for performing deep thinking 
on different topics, which is, you know, referred to as system two thinking. So he says, if you can build these three things, you can have a generally intelligent agent. And here's how. So first you need to, you know, seed your agent with one or more objectives. So have the agent use system two thinking, which is your deep level of thinking in conjunction with its world model to start ideating ways in order to optimize for its objectives. So if your AI system or whatever, you know, agent that you did have, its goal was to, you know, uh, steal a car, let's use that because it's more engaging, you would have to think, okay, how could I start to steal this car without getting caught? Do I want to do it at nighttime? Do I want to make sure it's in a dark alley? Yada, yada, yada. And then you think about the best plan. And of course, it picks the best idea and builds a plan. And then it uses this plan to take an action on the world. And of course, it might, you know, think, okay, nighttime is the best. So I'm going to wait until night. And then I'm going to take an action to scout out the location. And then, of course, it observes the result of this action and compares that result with the expectation that it had based on its world model. So the world model is basically its understanding of how the world works and of course and this is like true for humans as well as you take your actions in the world you're going to update your understanding and of course your knowledge of the world so it might update its world model here with the new knowledge gained and it uses system two thinking to make alterations to the plan and then you rinse and repeat this is true for like a lot of things that people do anyways like you know even for example, do, doing YouTube, you might think, okay, you, 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 you record videos in a certain fashion, then you upload them and then they don't do well. So you update your world model. And then of course, with the new knowledge gained, you become better. So this is what people do to, uh, you know, using system two thinking for a lot of different things. And this is like the basic definition, rinse and repeat of how these, you know, generally intelligent agents should work provided that they have these three things right here. So he says, my definition for general intelligence is an agent that can coherently execute the above cycle repeatedly over long periods of time, thereby being able to optimize any given objective. So this is his definition of general intelligence. And I think that is really important because, you know, we're seeing a lot of different definitions. One of the key things that's going on in AI is that no one can really agree on what the definition of, you know, AGI is. So it's important to see what a research engineer from OpenAI his perspective is on exactly what's going on. So it's kind of interesting to see exactly how that kind of works. And then um, what we do have here is, of course, we have, you know, his further explanation. So he says that the capacity to actually achieve arbitrary objectives is not a requirement. Some objectives are simply too hard and adaptability and coherence are the key. That can the agent use what it knows to synthesize a plan and continuously act towards a single objective over long time periods. And this is, of course, going to be a truly capable system, at least I think it is, because as much as we like to think that humans are, you know, truly like these crazy, crazy creatures and we're so special and so different from robots, like sometimes you can think about how people act and they, they truly don't like literally update their world model and they truly don't, you know, use system two thinking to even make changes to their plan. Like if you think about some people who, and of course there are like a, a bunch of different, you know, things that you could talk about regarding this, but I'm just talking surface level. Like for example, people who still do the wrong thing and for whatever reason they get the same result and they don't update their plan like they don't make alterations at all like if you were someone who was you know trying to i guess you could say um you know lose weight or you know learn a new skill you know if you try one way um of course if that way doesn't work you have to then you know make the alterations and then of course update the plan and then rinse and repeat and you'd be surprised at like if you just and I know this might be like a weird concept, but if you like look at how AI learns and how AI is being more effective, and if you actually like kind of apply these to your life, like it really, really does help in terms of being able to achieve certain goals. Like if you literally just make alterations to your plan after trying it, if it doesn't work, you will eventually get there. But of course, this is something that is much easier said than done when navigating the world. And an AI agent that's able to do this remarkably effectively, I think it's going to be a little bit more powerful than the average kind of human working around. So this is the section where we actually talk about world models. So he says, we're already building world models with autoregressive transformers, same architecture that we've been using recently. And then of course, particularly of the Omni model variety. 
How robust they are is up for debate. Of course, you've got hallucinations, all these kinds of different things. And of course, recently, the GPT-40, the Omni model, which is, you know, a new edition. And he actually did another blog post about how crazy that is. So he then states there's good news, though, in my experience, scale improves robustness. OK, so this is where like compute and those kind of things kind of improve the not capability, but like the overall improve imp robustness of the model. And humanity is currently pouring capital into scaling autoregressive models. So essentially what we do have is we do have a, a, a situation on our hands that was kind of, you know, sparked by OpenAI, the GPT series, where now people are pouring billions and billions of dollars. Microsoft, of course, is pouring a lot of capital into Project Stargate in conjunction with OpenAI a hundred billion dollar supercomputer sam altman seeking seven trillion dollars in capital of course that is a clickbait headline but um you know over the course of the next 10 to 20 years it might not be that crazy and this is where the large majority of investment is going because a lot of that investment is based on the current transformer autoregressive architecture so what we have here is that as long as the scale is increasing up to a certain extent we don't know if we're just like we don't know where we are on the sigmoid curve. The sigmoid curve is basically just the kind of growth area. So we don't know where we are. Like we could be, you know, here, we could be, you know, here and things are about to just taper off with GPT-5 coming into the mix. We could be like somewhere down here and things are about to get really, really crazy. So that's why this entire thing, Um, of course, if we've seen, you know, some early results from pouring more capital into scale this is going to be something that we continue to do so of course over the, the next you know few years we can expect robustness to improve but remember this is literally just based on the scale okay this is just based on the scale and that's not just based on the efficiency of course of the many different other things that go into ai systems such as you know the algorithms the software all of those kind of you know ways that you know you can make those systems even better especially other things on top of llms as well so with that said i suspect that the world models that we have right now are sufficient to build a generally intelligent agent so you can see here he says that with the with the world models that we have right now okay right now and that's kind of like in italic are sufficient to build a generally intelligent agent and he says that i suspect and this is a pretty crazy statement like i don't know if everyone would agree with this but um you know we don't really have a generally intelligent agent just yet so um but he's talking about the world models that we do have because i would argue that you know the systems that we do have do have a decent understanding of the world they just don't have the embodiment right now or at least the effective embodiment that we really do need so he says i also suspect that robustness can be further improved via the interaction of system two thinking and observing the real world this is the paradigm we haven't really seen in ai yet of course but still happens all the time for living things and it's a very important mechanism for improving robustness so you know the real world um you know observing the real world is something that you know we haven't really seen in ai yet of course this is going to happen in the next future it's going to be a lot harder to do than just making ai systems better because robotics is really hard like a lot harder than you know traditionally just working you know on something that's you know software based because robotics is you know it's hardware based so there are basically physical you know limitations that like you have to you know look at the laws of physics and when you're testing things it's a lot harder to get you know feedback and stuff like that um there's just it's just it's just harder basically so um, this is why you know we haven't really seen that yet and slowly and surely of course we are going to get there now one of the things he does talk about is of course the skeptics like Yan Lekan so he says while LLM skeptics like Yan Lekan say we haven't yet achieved the intelligence of a cat this is the point that they are missing yes LLM still lacks some basic knowledge that every cat has but they could learn that knowledge given the ability to self-improve in this way and such self-improvement is doable with transformers and the right ingredients okay so what he's basically saying here if you haven't you know seen the, the clip of Yan Lekun Yan Lekun is you know someone who's very very respected in the AI community for his contributions to the field and essentially the reason that Yan Lekun gets mentioned so much and I even did a recent video where I spoke about a lot of his ideas and what they mean for the space the brain of a, of a house cat is uh, is about 800 800 million neurons, you have to multiply this by about 2,000 to get the number of uh, synapses, the connections between neurons, which is the equivalent of number of parameters in an LLM. The biggest 
LLMs that we have at the moment that are practical are, have a few hundred billion uh, parameters, the equivalent of synapses. Um, so we, we're maybe at the size of a cat, but why is it that those systems are not nearly as smart as a cat? You know, a cat can do, uh, can remember, first of all, understands the physical world, can plan complex actions, um, can do some level of reasoning, actually much better than the biggest LLMs. And uh, uh, so what that tells you is that we're missing something really, really conceptually, something really big. But to summarize that 30 minute video, basically Yan LeCun is stating that, you know, LLMs are auto aggressive and that kind of architecture just doesn't work with, you know, humans and how, you know, if you're trying to get to AGI, it's just not going to work basically. So um, he's basically saying that, you know, uh, the current LLM systems, they, they just haven't yet achieved the intelligence of a cat. But he's arguing here that, you know, LLMs, you know, they could learn that knowledge and given the ability to self-improve in that way, um, it's doable with transformers and the right ingredients. So, of course, this is a bold claim because I'm not going to say that this guy has some secret information at OpenAI, but I think that based on, you know, the current information, okay, it being doable, I would love to see that because that would be a huge step up in terms of the capabilities. So I think the future is definitely going to be interesting in this part because I think some theories are going to be disproved or they're going to be proven right, which means either, you know, we're, we're, we're like an off ramp to AGI and right now we're going on the off ramp and this is just a huge tangent which was created by OpenAI and we're going down the wrong, you know, I guess you could say architecture, we're pouring billions of dollars into the wrong thing and eventually we find the new architecture or we're barreling down the right way and we're about to get some very interesting stuff because either way, I think this is going to be interesting. So this is where he talks about, you know, the reasoning and he says there is not a well-known way to achieve system two thinking. This is where, you know, systems have, you know, a long thought process, but I'm quite confident that it is possible within the transformer paradigm with the technology and compute we have available to us right now, basically that we can achieve system two thinking, the long-term thinking, that AI systems need in order to achieve goals that are quite effective in the actual world. I've seen some systems do that. Like I've seen a few demos here and there, like a few agents being able to plan, you know, things like Devon and such. This kind of system to thinking is, you know, it's there, but it's not there to the point where it's remarkably effective. So basically, you know, within two to three years, we're going to be able to build a mechanism which is, you know, sufficiently good enough for the cycle described above. So this is one of the first things. So you can see that this is two to three years away. Now, two to three years, this is kind of important because two to three years is 2020, so that's 2027. And that date also lines up with Leopold Aschenbrenner's date of AGI in 2027. And I think you guys really need to like understand that system two thinking is incredible because what we've seen like from LLMs is that a lot of the times when we give an LLM the ability to think with whatever, you know, kind of, um, you know, architecture that we kind of implement, you know, not architecture, but whatever kind of prompting strategy just on the base level that we use, whether it be, you know, hey, think step by step or, you know, Monte Carlo tree search or whatever, you know, chain of thought prompting, whatever kind of way that we um, think, like that allows the AI to truly, truly improve the results. Um, and that shows us that, you know, if we can get a very, very effective system to thinking, and I think a lot of people are working on this, then we can get something that's good enough for the cycle above, which is an intelligent, and generally intelligent agent. And that's truly going to change everything because it's going to improve the reasoning. And that's going to improve, you know, how effective it is, even in, even in its embodiment and just the overall, you know, accuracy and robustness of the model. So I think it's important to know that like this system to thinking area um, is pretty crazy because I, I can't remember which paper it was I was reading. But they basically said that, look, if someone asked you to, you know, a math question and you had to give it an, and you had to give them an answer immediately without thinking, like within 0 0.1 seconds, your answer would probably be wrong. And that's essentially what we're doing to LLMs when we ask them a question and they respond immediately. But when we, you know, give them the time to think and they are able to, you know, debate on, you know, what it is that they're able to do, and they're able to reason over a longer period of time. And this is something that Sam Altman said in an interview a long time ago, not a long time ago, you know, eight months in the AI industry is a long time ago. He said that it's something that he is working on. Um, the responses do get a lot better. So I think this is going to be exacerbated in future models. Like they're really going to, you know, hammer down on that. 
um, as well as scale. And I think that's going to drive a lot more improvements than, you know, a lot more people think. And um, here's where he comes to embodiment. So the embodiment is, of course, something we're still figuring out with AI. This is, of course, you know, stuff like figure, you know, the humanoid robots, the Tesla Optimus. Um, and of course, he says it's once again something I'm quite optimistic about near term in the near term advancements. There is a convergence currently happening between the field of robotics and LLMs that is hard to ignore. Of course, the recent figure demo where they combined the knowledge of GPT-4 or whatever AI system it was with the, you know, fluidity of the new figure robots providing us with an very, very impressive demo that showcased what the future is about to you know, become. He says robots are becoming extremely capable, able to respond to very abstract commands like move forward, get up, kick the ball, reach for object. For example, see what figure is up to or the recently released Unitree H1, which is, um, I guess, a, an AI agent avatar, which is, you know, going to be doing a lot of interesting stuff in the future because it's it's interestingly enough it kind of looks like boston dynamics robot but i know that boston dynamics have been working on that for quite some time so i don't know how unitary managed to produce that robot that quickly like it's truly incredible if they did just you know look at boston dynamics for inspiration but it was really really quickly that they managed to get that done so you can see here on the opposite end of the spectrum, large Omni models give us a way to map arbitrary sensor inputs into commands, which can be then sent to these sophisticated robotic systems. And that's, of course, you know, these these models that, you know, have so many different inputs and outputs that allow us to, you know, you know, use them in a way that we, we haven't really before. And he says, I've been spending a lot of time lately walking around outside, talking to GPT-40 while letting it observe the world through my smartphone camera. I like asking it questions to test its knowledge of the physical world. And it's far from perfect, but it is surprisingly capable. We're close to being able to deploy system systems which can commit coherent strings of action on the environment and observe and understand the results. I suspect we're going to see some really oppressive progress in the next one to two years here. He says, this is the field of AI I'm personally most excited in, and I plan to spend most of my time working on this over the coming years. So of course, some impressive progress is gonna be happening in the next one to two years. You know, coherent strings of actions, and he's talking about GPT-40. Of course, if you don't know, GPT-40 has that update where you can, you know, talk to it through a camera and that stuff. So I'm guessing maybe he just has access to the one that OpenAI haven't released yet. But, you know, he does a summary here, and I think this summary is really cool. He says, we've basically solved building world models. We have two to three years on system two thinking, and I think one to two years on embodiment. The latter two can be done concurrently. Once all of the ingredients have been built, we need to integrate them together and build the cycling algorithm I described above, and I'd give that another one to two years. So my current estimate for AGI is three to five years. I'm leaning to three for something that looks an awful lot like a generally intelligent embodied agent, which I would personally call an AGI, then a few years to get it to the point that we convince Gary Marx of the world. So basically, he's stating that, you know, a generally intelligent agent i think i was wrong at the beginning where i said that this is not agi but i guess that this would be agi but of course on the scale you know it might not be on the scale that you know some people um of course would accept it and that's why i've added here not i've added but he's added you know the gary marcus and that's why i said it might not be agi to some people um but of course that could be agi and then of course you know after you get the generally intelligent agent that's able to do those kinds of things um you're gonna have to refine it for some other years and basically gary marcus i wouldn't say he's an ai skeptic but he is someone that you know criticizes um ai quite a lot so he can be seen as someone that is like you know just a skeptic and someone that just you know kind of criticizes a lot of the advancements so it's going to be interesting to see because he does make a lot of good points but like i said before it will be interesting to see if some of the points he makes about the future and i'm talking about gary marcus here if they are proven wrong because um we're at that point where it's either going to be exponential improvement or maybe we were wrong about this so um yeah one to two years for robotics so to solve that because i think robotics has done really really well but i do think that you know the main thing that we need to think about of course is system two thinking um and of course the, the, the how the world models are going to be you know interacting with them so he says we've basically solved that and of course two to three years on system two thinking and one to you two years on embodiment so I am kind of intrigued about this, you know, prediction on why he thinks that, you know, two to three years on system two thinking will take a lot longer than embodiment when, you know, traditionally, you know, Morabek's paradox suggests that like, you know, 
robotics is going to take a lot longer than you know software but um of course he's the research engineer and i'm the person making the video so um i'm guessing that when you actually think about it you know planning things in the real world is actually really hard and when we do look at a lot of the agent systems that we do have right now they aren't that good at system two thinking which is the ability to plan um in a, in a long-term horizon in a way that's very effective i remember i was looking at another paper on gpt4 on deception and it wasn't able to effectively plan when there were multiple steps involved when you had one layer it was fine but as soon as you got to two layers uh, the accuracy just dropped to like 10 to 15 percent but i mean i guess we're gonna have to see with gpt5 gpt6 if there are any like special models that OpenAI build just based on that and they integrate them in because we know they previously did you know this mixture of experts and that's how they got to like gpt4 that like how they got it to you know be so good but um yeah overall you can see three to five years for agi and i'm leaning for towards something three that looks like an awful lot like an, an embodied agent which i would personally call an agi so we've got three years to something that's pretty much agi which would put us at 2027 like i said that date I've, I've heard that date so many times now so i would say the 2027 might be like the first demo for agi and i think the thing is as well is that like open ai isn't going to be the only one leading the charge here remember like a lot of companies now like the light bulb moment has hit them so they're going to be pouring you know millions and millions of dollars in companies nations are going to be pouring billions and billions of dollars in so there's going to be a lot of money flowing into this industry because it is definitely a race because um the pot of gold at the end is so big that they, they are definitely willing to do that so three to five years for agi in three years we'll get the first embodied agent um, and of course, two to three years for system thinking and one to two years on embodiment because we are pretty far ahead for robotics. Because if you actually think about like where Boston Dynamics Atlas is, like if we just took like every single company on earth and just put them in a list, if you've seen how effective that robot is at moving, I mean, combine that, you know, with a world model and system two thinking, that is insane. So um, yeah, I, I, th I think this article was really, you know, insightful on the future. And I think it goes to show like some of the ideas that are floating around now about, you know, general intelligence and where we're headed. I think they're kind of converging and, and overlapping, which is a good sign because, you know, a lot of times what we have in AI is like a lot of different, you know, contrasting ideas. But overall, I think 20, 27 to 2030, I think those three year period, that three year period, provided there's no national tragedy, I think it's going to be super interesting to be in the space and actually paying attention. So with that being said, if you did enjoy the video, I'll leave a link to this down below. Let me know what you think about this. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out the school um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.